we have a president that talks about the ozone. And then he flies to Hawaii to play golf at a 747 with a four monster engine. He plays more golf than people on the PGA Tour. We can rebuild villages in Iraq and Afghanistan. You know what? We can rebuild Flint, Michigan. We are in great danger as we allow the culture of division to flourish in our society. The truth is, we aren't a single issue country. We face a complex set of economic, social, and political challenges. I think Hillary Clinton's unqualified to be president of the United States. Have we lost our faculties? Is political correctness so consuming that we're not willing to say that's just nuts? 2016 presidential candidate Senator Marco Rubio goes on the record. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Greta. Thanks for having me. Thank you for joining us. Senator, you and Donald Trump are both going. Senator Ted Cruz, a liar, actually you use more polite words. You say that he makes things up. I don't think you've used the L word. Um, but um, Senator Ted Cruz, in a new poll to, out tonight, has, is in second place in South Carolina. You're in third. How do you explain what, uh, why that is? I don't think these polls are relevant at this stage, and we've seen it in multiple states now where those numbers change at the end, and that's true whether you're up or down. I mean, voters are still making their decision. And the only thing I said about Ted is that he's not telling the truth about him, multiple things. I mean, he's been rebuked over the weekend by National Right to Life for not telling the truth about my record on Planned Parenthood. He's distorted and not told the truth about my record on the definition of marriage. And today, he wasn't telling the truth when he gave a defense speech and arguing about how he's going to increase the military. Ted Cruz has been weak on national defense. The only budget he ever voted for is a budget offered by Rand Paul that bragged about reducing defense spending. And he's voted against every defense authorization bill he's ever voted on. So I think he's trying to cover for that with some of these things. But people see through it. All right. Oh, I'm making the assumption everything you, the foregoing you said is all true, and I'm not challenging you on that because I don't have it in front of me, but I'll make the assumption is you must be yeah. pulling your hair out um, that apparently the South Carolina voters, uh, to some extent, are believing him. No, not really. I think if you look at the way trends go in these campaigns, we feel great about our momentum and where we're going to wind up. I mean, there's, there's five polls a day, and they all show different things. What they all consistently show is that our numbers continue to grow, and we feel good about what that's going to mean on Saturday night. And uh, so that's what I focus on. I don't necessarily, I mean, if, if I listened to polls, I never would have run. I was in ninth place out of ten or something when we first started this race. Which brings me to Facebook. I, go, I asked my Facebook followers to submit some questions, and Marlene Lutz put a question on my Facebook page. It says, at what point in your, meaning you, sir, your political life did you feel qualified to run for president of the United States? What did you say to yourself to come to this decision based on your history? Yeah. Well, first, I looked at our party, and I said the Republican Party not, that needs to be unified and it needs to grow. We have to be able to take our conservative message to people who are not voting for Republicans and conservatives. And I can do that better than anyone in this race, and I knew that. And the other is, the most important thing a president does is national security. And if you look at the Republican field and the people who are left, I have more experience than anyone else running when it comes to national security and foreign policy. And it's not even close, actually. That's the most important job of a president. And so when I saw that and I saw the field, I said we had to have someone running who could win and who was strong on national security. And that's when I knew that, uh, that I had a chance uh, to not just be the nominee, but be the president at a time when America desperately needs a new commander in chief. Constitution says that the president shall nominate someone to the Supreme Court, and the president has received a lot of criticism from the Republican side of the aisle saying they doesn't pay attention to the Constitution, and they point to his executive orders. Now he's faced with the clause that says he shall nominate, and some Republicans say that he shouldn't. What do you say? Well, look, he can nominate if he wants. We're just saying the Senate's not moving forward on any nomination until after the election. And there's been precedent set for that over 80 years now, in which in the last year of the eighth year of a president, we don't, at some point we don't even move forward on appellate judges. So but is that the stage, president you, you want to set, and, though? I mean, at some point the shoes sure, could be on the absolutely. other foot. And, you, and you've got the situation where uh, president, president Ronald Reagan nominated uh, Justice Kennedy in the last year of his presidency, and that was uh, con then he was confirmed to the Supreme Court. I mean, I, I know that the Republicans say, well, the Democrats uh, did it this way, so now we're going to do it this way. Why not? Why not? Uh, why not at least have a hearing, and you can reject the nominee. 
Well, again, I think I, I agree with Senator McConnell. We're going to have an election in November. And in November, when we have this election, voters are going to get to choose a president. And a lot of big issue in this campaign is going to be what kind of justice should replace someone like Justice Scalia. Justice Scalia is perhaps the foremost jurist in American history for, this pro, for the idea, the reality, that their job is to interpret the Constitution according to its original meaning. He needs to be replaced by someone just like that. You're not going to get someone like that from Barack Obama. But again, in November, there's going to be an election, and if Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders wins, I don't believe they will, but if they do, then that's the kind of jurist they're going to get something different. But if not, then the next, the next president will be someone, uh, me, I hope, who will appoint someone like Justice Scalia to the bench. So in November, voters are going to have a say on this, and then we'll move forward from there. And that, that's what I think the appropriate approach is at this moment. We're not moving forward in the Senate, and I'll do everything I can procedurally to stop us moving forward. Uh, but, but again, uh, the majority leader has said we're not going to do anything, and so I feel comfortable with that. Senator, nice to have you join us and good luck uh, in the uh, primary, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Greta.